And now, for what I like to call the piano of literature, the cornerstone of this whole thing, the National Book Award for Poetry. Poetry not only teaches us about the world, but how to live in the world. This year's finalists for the National Book Award for Poetry investigate immigration and colonialism, examine the effects of systemic violence, and contemplate complex personal and cultural identities. But these books also ask us to recognize beauty, to revel in our imagination, and to build a future worth celebrating. The panel chair for this year's National Book Award for Poetry is Lely Long Soldia, whose poetry collection, Whereas, was a finalist for the 2017 National Book Award for Poetry. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor to be with you tonight, and it has been an indescribable honor to serve alongside fellow pa panel members, Rigoberto Gonzalez, John Hennessy, Diana Coy Wen, and Elizabeth Willis. I wish to sincerely thank the panel members. I thank you for your dedication to our work this year. Under unforeseen and unbelievable stresses and difficulty. I thank you for the respectful discourse we shared. There was a trust established amongst us that allowed openness, honesty, and an ability to encounter our differing views, not as opposition, but as important considerations to move us forward. In these times, especially, this was a testimony to the power of consultation when conducted with care, integrity, and absolute respect for our community. For me, it will be a lifelong memory. Within the books we read, we found the poetry of witness. That is to say, poetry that refuses forgetting. These books were courageous in their offerings, ways in which to fully hold the rent sides of a division and specificities that somehow pierce collective human experience. Many of these poems gave a timely address of social issues, the turbulence and turmoil we are in while also acknowledging and embracing the natural world, all of creation as our kin. And for all of its complexity, the parameters of love remain indefinable in many of these books. But without question, we understand that love's existence fiercely is. It is, it is, it is. And it is what makes us human. With celebratory music and fireworks, this year's uh, National Book Award finalists are Tommy Blount for Fantasia for the Man in Blue published by Four Way Books. Excuse me, I think I read it in the wrong order. I'll start again. The finalists are Meme Bersenbrugge for A Treatise on Stars by New Directions Books. Tommy Blount for Fantasia for the Man in Blue by Four Way Books. Don Mi Choi for DMZ Colony by Wave Books. Anthony Cody for Borderland Apocrypha by Omnidon. 
and Natalie Diaz for Postcolonial Love Poem, published by Grey Wolf Press. This year's uh, National Book Award winner for poetry is Don Mi Choi for DMZ Colony. Don Mi Che, DMZ Colony, Wave Books. Don Mi Che's urgent DMZ Colony captures the migratory latticework of those transformed by war and colonization. Homelands present and past share one sky where birds fly, but during the Korean War, cranes had no place to land. Devastating and vigilant, this bricolage of survivor accounts, drawings, photographs, and handwritten texts unearthed the truth between fact and the critical imagination. We are all victims of history, so Che compels us to witness and to resist. Thank you so much. Um, I, I um, well, it, this is this feels really unreal to me. Um, I want to um, thank the National Book Foundation um, and also the amazing judges. I'm also grateful and honored to be in the company of May May Rosenberger, Tommy Blount, Anthony Cody, and Natalie Diaz. Thank you to Amazing Wave Books. Thank you. This award is for my father. Poetry and translation have changed my life. For me, they are inseparable. The International Women's Network Against Militarism have taught me to think critically about translation. And these wonderful small and independent presses have generously published my translations of Korean feminist poets and translation related writings, action books, Good Morning, M Menagerie, New Directions, Tin Fish, Ugly Duckling, Vagabond, Wave Books, and Zephyr Press. Thank you. Forrest Gander notes in a recent interview that the act of writing poetry is one of the least predatory acts that one can engage in. In Barrel of a Pen, Ngugiwa Tiongo urges writers to be on the side of the struggles of those sat upon. For Kim Hae Soon, the ideal labor of poetry is resistance. She says, I needed to ex excavate the faceless face with language. Allen Ginsberg, in his 1974 NBA's acceptance speech, called out the fact, our military has practiced subversions of popular will abroad and can do so here if challenged. We may have already arrived at Ginsberg's prophetic fact. Therefore, it is more important than ever that we engage in the non-predatory either labor of writing and reading poetry and translation and be on the side of the struggles of those set upon here and abroad. Thank you.